Okay, 8-6 is slope. Um, slope can be used on uh, streets, mountains, hills, um, how high does it go up versus how far does it go. Roofs, your, your rooftop of your house has a slope on it. You'll notice that uh, different rooftops have different slopes and they're designed that way. Um, the two words that best de describe slope are rise, and run and you will hear me say a lot from this point on rise over run because something is going to go up but it's also going to go out when I find the slope of it I take the rise how much it goes up and I put it over the run which is a fraction for example let's say we have and this will be a um, oh kind of a no, I don't want that one. I want this one. All right, let me take that shape. Let me have the shape. Let me have the shape. There we go. Oop, not that. Let me have the shape. There we go. As I talk to myself. Let's say we have this really sweet slide. And um, it's some inflatable slide. And so you climb up it, and let's say this slide is um, 21 feet high. So let's get back to my, my pin. And let's say from the front to back, it is 7 feet long. Okay. So we need to find two things. We need to find the rise and the run. Well, rise is pretty simple. How far does it rise out of the ground? It is 21 feet high. And then run is how wide is it? And it's 7 feet. Okay, so when I divide that out, my slope is 3 feet which means for every foot that it goes over, it goes three feet up. Okay, that would be a pretty intense slide. All right. So you can also, um, you can also do this if we have coordinates. Okay, if I have coordinates, Let's say I have a coordinate right here. And let's say I have a coordinate um, over here. Okay. Now, this coordinate is negative 2. Negative 2, 5. And this coordinate is this coordinate is eight eight. Okay, we can do the same thing. We can make this into a triangle. So something like that. And we can say that it runs. Let's get back on the pin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So my run is ten, and my rise is three. Okay, so my formula said rise over run, so my slope is going to be rise overrun, which in this case is 3 tenths. So in this case, for every 10 feet, let's say that was feet, I didn't label it as feet, for every 10 feet that it goes over, it only goes up 3 feet. If I made a slide out of this, this would be a much less intense slide. Okay, It would be a lot slower and a little more boring in my opinion. Okay, So a slope of 3 tenths. Now, there is another way to find slope. 
Let's say I take those same coordinates, negative 2, 5, and 8, 8. And let's say they give you these coordinates, but you don't want to graph every single time. There is a slope formula, and slope is going to be represented by the letter M. Okay, so the slope formula is this. I take my y2 minus my y1, and I divide it by x2 minus x1. Remember that the y-axis is the one that goes up and down. So that's my rise aspect. And my x-axis is my left to right. So that is my run aspect. That's why they go in that order, rise over run. So I have two coordinates. Okay, coordinate number one and coordinate number two, which means this is x1, x value of the first coordinate, this is x2. This is y1, this is y2. So now we just substitute. Basically, I look at it like this, guys. Take the y values and subtract them. Okay, so that's going to be 8 minus 5. And take the x values and subtract them, but you have to be very careful here because you are going to take 8, you are going to subtract a negative 2. Okay, so again, you subtract the value, subtract the negative 2. So 8 minus 5 is 3. And minus a minus here means plus, so 8 plus 2 is 10, giving us the 3 tenths that we came up with. Oops, don't do that on me. The three tenths that we came up with in the other one. So let's look at a let's look at a couple more. I'll I'll just throw these out there and let you work these on your own. Okay, so I'll give you just a couple seconds to take a look at that. Go ahead and try to work that. Again, using the formula. Subtract the y's and put it over when you subtract the x's. Okay, give that a shot. I'll be back in a second. Okay, so we are looking at our y values. So that's going to be negative 2 minus a negative 2 all over 3 minus 4. Okay, so negative 2 minus 2, excuse me, negative 2 minus a minus means plus. So that's going to give me a 0 on top. And 3 minus 4 is negative 1. Anytime we have a slope with a 0 on top, that gives me a slope of 0. Now, I know some of your brains are thinking, well, what happens if we have a zero on bottom? Well, let me show you one of those. Again, I'm going to write my formula over here. All right, so in this case, we're going to take negative 8 minus 2, and then we're going to take 6 minus 6. So that gives me negative 10 over 0. Now, you cannot divide by 0. So anytime you have a 0 on the bottom as your slope, the slope of this line is undefined, which means it doesn't exist. You can't take the slope of a line. Now, you might say, well, why couldn't you take the slope of that line? I'm just going to sketch a graph here real quick. If I did this, this would be six spaces over, two spaces up, then six spaces over, eight spaces down. You'll notice if I were to connect that, that that is a vertical line. All vertical lines
all vertical lines have an undefined slope. Okay, you might ask, well, does that make the last one that was specific, specifically zero? If I sketched a graph of this one real quick, this would be four negative two and three negative two. So if you connected that, that's a horizontal line. So anything Okay. Anything that has a slope of zero is horizontal, and anything that has an undefined slope is vertical. Now, let's say that I asked these, um, if I gave you these slopes, um, And then I asked you to classify these. Um, what I'm looking for in classifications are, is it a rising slope? And I'm going to put the choices over here. Does it rise? Does it fall? Is it horizontal? Or is it vertical? These are our classifications. And there we go. All right. Now, what determines it? Well, obviously, if something is rising, do you think its slope is going to be positive or negative? Um, a rising slope will be positive. So that means my second problem is rising. My first slope, because it's negative, would be falling. Okay. My third slope, because it equals zero, okay, is horizontal. And my last one, because it's got a zero on the bottom of the fraction, that makes it undefined, which means it is vertical. Okay, so rising, falling, vertical, and horizontal. Those are the four slope classifications. All right, about 13 minutes, a little bit longer today, but uh, you guys will do just fine. We will see you on Wednesday.